Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we have another episode of Metro Exodus. It's been a while. I, I had to download this game back on, I mean, I had to re-download this game on Steam because Epic wouldn't save anything, so here we are on Steam. I think I have everything back the way I was supposed to. I had to play the whole th beginning again. Um, so hopefully it's all back. I got a new, a few new things like a new helmet and stuff like that. But other than that, everything is the same as far as I know. Uh, so let's just jump in here and see what's going on. Why don't we? Where are we going to be now? Artyom. Artyom. Yes? Wake up, dear. Hi. Is he up yet? What are you doing in my room? Artyom, the <laughs> colonel wants you on the breach. See you later. Come on, wake up. Okay, fine. Oh, you, you wanted to sleep. I see how it is. You want me to leave? You did a great job there. We are not home anymore. So we'd all better act like you did. Smoothly. It's not like there's many of us humans left now. So I hope someday we will be able to trust others just because. Because they are people too. Am I bothering you? No. Sorry. I'm in a philosophical mood today. Okay. Stay here for a bit, Artyom. Sure thing. This is great. I wish I could stay like this forever. Artyom, when you climbed those ruins back in Moscow, or with your radio, did you imagine our life on the surface at all? No, not really. A home for one. A place where we could live. A log cabin on the outskirts of a forest. That'd be nice. Or how about a bungalow on an ocean shore? Oh, that'd be really great. Well, you know, there's something great in simply going anywhere like this. Together. Through the abandoned stations, the ruins, the wasteland. Especially in our own private compartment. <laughs> Thinking back, isn't this our honeymoon trip? <laughs> it certainly feels like one, even though it's a bit late. Just a bit? We've only had some honeymoon sorties at best so far. Yeah. You know, I had a talk with Katya. I'm sitting here recalling that bridge and those people there, and we've been sitting underground for 20 years. And they haven't. So what? These are not the same people who used to build cities, planes, and space rockets. They are just like us in Metro, only even more dejected. They are essentially slaves. For real. They work all day and pray all night, always watched, always directed. Everything is under control. Everything is decided by the community. Well, I mean, Celantius. They don't even have any property. Even their socks belong to the community. They're just entranced with him, with his ridiculous lies about electricity. Of course, not everyone got fooled easily, but if they dare ask questions, they get penance, exercising an electric demon with prayer and the cross. But that's a death sentence. Uh -huh. How is a flashlight dangerous? Or a radio? But no, they shun it all. They hide and keep praying. How can you even make people believe this ridiculous garbage within just a few years? People in general start believing lies surprisingly easily, don't yeah. they? Yeah, yes they as do. As long as those lies are convenient or at least familiar, Take us, in Metro. All right, we haven't met the occupying forces yet. If we disregard that shirt I found on an antenna... <coughs> Katya and Crest never met them either. But maybe they are still out there somewhere. And if they are, then they didn't even tell us about them back home. 
They didn't tell us that the war was still on. They just made us believe that there's no life anywhere outside of Metro. They've been lying to us. Lying non-stop. All this time. Were their intentions good? Perhaps. But the Metro is a castle built on lies. Damn, am I angry. It's and okay. so far, no matter how far we it's get, right. we haven't met a single enemy. Isn't that strange? But father won't have a word of it. Stay vigilant. Be careful. The enemy never sleeps. You know, I love my father a whole lot, no matter what. But what if everything he's been told is just another layer of lies? I hope we'll find out how deep this rabbit hole is what once is we get to Yamantau. What is with your dilled rabbit? <sighs> well, what do you know? I do feel better now after hey. telling you. You had to get things off your chest. I understand. Thanks for hearing me out, Artyom. Oh, no problem. Let's just sit here a little. But what, what All is... right, run along. Dad wanted something. I don't want to leave though. Okay, fine. What is this? Diary. Crew. Oh, what's the crew? With Anna, Miller, Demir, Duke, Yarman, Idiot. Well, I did not know this name was this guy's name was Idiot for a long time until I just redid it. And I didn't know... Oh god, I haven't got the name yet. Sam was an American. Oh, there's a lot to read here. I'm not gonna be able to read all this stuff. Diary... New world... Okay. Equipment! Anyways. And if things look different, uh... It's because, um... I also downloaded the enhanced version of this, so everything is supposed to be clear. I'm not really sure. I didn't know I had downloaded that one, but. Uncle Artyom, Uncle Artyom, our uh, doctor has already set his shop up. Wanna go look? It's uh, so cool. Sure. Here, Uncle Artyom. Ah, hi, Artyom. See my new place? Yes. Fit for a king, I must say. Looks nice. Ah, what do you think of this workbench, eh? Everything is within reach. Yet, there's so much space left. <laughs> Most of the stuff you and the guys found outside and gave to me went into making this workshop happen. So thank you. No problem. We'll have to keep pitching in like this, too. Looks like we're facing a long journey, and useful things like ammo or equipment don't grow on trees. Plus, the further from Moscow we get, the harder they'll probably be to get. So don't forget to collect all the materials you find to keep us going. There's so many things to do. I haven't decided where I'm going to work on the suits, but I'll have to, and soon. And it's high time we fixed our uniforms. Some of our people are starting to look pretty ragged, you know? Yeah. Well, Duke's plate carrier won't hold the back plate anymore. And he jokes that he's lucky it's not the front one, or else his toes would be in danger. <sighs> Regardless, I am turning this little gang back into a real army. All right, good. Well, that's it. I bragged enough and won't waste any more of your time. The colonel summoned you. Well, I have stuff to do too. You guys are fast to break gear, but <laughs> none too expedient to fix it. That's usually how it goes. What can I say? We like breaking. Oh, yes! I can't remember the nonsense. A smoke break. That's good. Yeah, I'll join you. <sighs> oh, this is one mean smoke. Damn, this is rough. Well, <clears throat> nothing we couldn't take. Yeah. Well, you are the right kind of guys. I mean, you, the Colonel, Duke, that guy did a swell job on that bridge. And now he's bragging about it like a child. He's a child, <laughs> really. No, a child. But he's good. 
So, he is a uh, child. Yeah, what did I want to say? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, thank you. You you people accepted me, and and I. Uh, I'm a simple guy. I, I I will pay that debt back. Okay. I like how I'm just blowing this right so, in your face. How do you like it out here after your tunnels? Freedom, huh? Oh, it is nice. I'm gonna tell you. Sure thing. So much space. It feels too empty to me, though. Just reeds and ruins and those damn mutants. Yeah, Freedom. I don't. I do too. Why are you, man? Anyways, I'm gonna go on. You guys are gonna see the government. So, Bratucha, don't be mad, but just tell me, what the hell do you even need them for? What? Well, of course, it might be interesting to take a look, but throughout all of my rambling, I only met two kinds of ex-government people. Oh. Dead ones and gang leaders. And <laughs> let me tell you, the latter are much worse than your typical bandit. They just have to make a speech before doing something off. So what I mean, I, I didn't really care about the government even before the war, much less now, when everything's long since gone to shit. So what for, really? Oh. I'm a simple man, Artyomich. I told I'm with you. That means I'm with you for the long haul. But I'd much rather find a nice place to live at than go see the government. Of course, they could give us luxury bunkers or something. Well, Artyom, you seem cold. Go get warmed up a bit. I'll smoke some more. I have stuff to think about. Oh, okay. Or just stay. No, <laughs> we have enough space now. But how are you going to fix the suits then? <laughs> Alright, goodbye. Well, like everyone else, I take a thread and a needle, and I use a sail stitch. Wow, cool. Can you teach me? Anna? I think you two are getting a little... <laughs> Artyom, come on in and have a seat. Stepan's putting on a live performance here. So, Artyom, are you up for a jam? Come on, pick the guitar up. Well, I'm actually good at playing the guitar. If only I was this good at real life. I'm flopping my fingers on it and somehow I'm making noise with it. Well, well, I gotta go. Thank you, Stepan. I'm sorry to ask, Katya, but Nastya's father. He's dead, isn't he? Does Nastya know? He is. I tried keeping it a secret. Told her he left for the market. Around three days passed, and I still kept it in. <laughs> I just sat there with a needle in my hand and didn't see anything. It was all black before my eyes. And then she snuggles up to me and says, You should cry, Ma. You will feel better. Sieni used to say it. So I cried and cried. She knows. She knows it all. I'm sorry, Katya. I'm so sorry. Let me tell you how we ended up at the bridge. We used to live in northeast from here, quite close if you go in a straight line. But it took us a month. Everything's bomb to rubble out there. Yermak asked me and I told him. Sini used to say there are lots of military factories out there. Not just military, of course, general industry. And now you can't pass through there even with filters. The radiation is so high. Ooh. No railway either, just crater upon crater. We were quite far, but our counter still went crazy. One route appeared intact. Well, there was expect? nothing to bomb. <laughs> so we used that one, thinking we'd get further to the west, but... But of course they did not let us cross the bridge with the diesel. They said it was satanic. <laughs> they were ready to let us stay if we gave them the diesel to cleanse it. So we stayed. And then we couldn't leave, even if we wanted. 
that old goat, Father Silentius, brainwashed everyone, so they would just pray and bow nonstop. They broke our diesel down with their bare hands and threw it into the river. Purification. And on top of it, they gave us trouble for not helping them. Senia went to check what was going on, and there were only locals there. Because Silentius at the Skatina had sent our people away to test them. He said that if they wanted to be truly accepted, they had to defeat a demon. Senia went to stop them. But it was too late. He only found burnt rags. And then they sent him to do the same. He never came back. Katya, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. How would well, you? Well, you really didn't. What's done is done. Yep. So, what's up <sighs> what kind of got so glum in here? Talking, it was mad. Mm. Uh, it's a long story. Something. Come on, uh, I'll come on. With you. The colonel is waiting for you on the bridge. Well, there I am, sitting on a beam, <laughs> looking at Artyom, milling about below. Oh, you are so full of it. <laughs> Artyom did most of the work. <laughs> that he did, uh, yeah, he did. But you don't have to interrupt my lies. <laughs> you asked me about the vest yourselves. All right, go on. So I see Artyom get to the door, and I think it's time I came down. So I do. But something just holds on to me. What does? How should I know? It's dark. Nobody around. But I can't move. And those locals kept going on about Tsar something. So I thought I was in a kind of a bind. So? So I just unfastened the safety and let down. There was that shed down there. The roof was uh, kind of close. Uh, 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 and what about the Tsar? Oh, yeah. blue! The Tsar was huge! Scary as shit! And there was this rusty bolt, and my carrier got snagged on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, Duke, are lucky you already have a nickname. <laughs> That's hilarious. And what was next? Oh, <laughs> next. Next we jumped that old preacher of theirs. Well, Artem did most of it. <laughs> he swooped in like a hawk! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's good. Well, I was clamoring about those beams and fighting that side. <laughs> oh, I'm killing myself. Well, hey. he basically solved the whole problem. I usually, that's usually what I do. I'm not that like good at that. Good job, Artyom. Ah, oh, keep your applause down. Yeah, you both did well. Crest also. <laughs> sure. He did a swell job distracting those guards. I almost wet my pants with laughter when they started hauling that timber. <laughs> He's an artist. Yeah, he's a great guy. He all came out on top of the game. And that calls for what? A drink. You nailed it. You truly are one of us now, Sam. <laughs> Will you be joining us? Nah, not now. I'll have some at dinner. Well, you'll have to catch up then. Sure thing. Anyways, we will just have a little as a warm-up now. Can I drink? I can. <laughs> Great. Let's do it. That's some good stuff. I'll just take this cup that's just sitting here. Uh, hey guys, yeah, there's something good I've been thinking about. What does everyone expect of this trip? Personally, I want to come back and tell Sveta of my adventures so that she'd look at me with her huge gray eyes without blinking and keep saying, you're such a hero, darling. <laughs> so you're expecting heroics and scars. That works. <laughs> and why did you come? Well, my heart is aching for true romance. 
But in the metro, all women want a solid relationship, a reliable husband, a real provider. <laughs> but not you, I don't guess. <laughs> Enough of that smug smile. It's unbearable. <laughs> not that I've had much better luck here so far. As soon as Katya <sighs> came aboard, Stepan started cooing around her like a peacock. <laughs> <laughs> you should be happy. Katya is a tough girl. You'd be under her thumb in no time. Oh man, I'm out. <laughs> that is unlikely. It's not a bottomless cup. Not the kind of man to upstage his friend in a contest for a lady, especially when that friend promises to break my arm. <laughs> I'll catch my stroke of luck soon enough. There in Yamantau, women from all over the country have already gathered, waiting for yours truly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right. You, Demir? What made you go? Well, uh, at first I just went along with you guys, uh, the Colonel. But even then, I thought this is my chance to make my dream come true, a chance to see Kazakhstan, my people. But first, we must come back to Moscow. Because it isn't fair. People must know that they've put up with enough. They are free. They can live outside now. What do you think about that, idiot? I'm with you, Demir. Yet, freedom is not so simple. There was this freedom fighter, Che Guevara. He died under 40. Comrade Mao, whose book you've been perusing on the other hand, was a strict ruler but lived a long life. Well, we should have expected that from you. <laughs> Weird thing, though, is that you are called idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's by his own choice. Because he's so fond of Chekhov. Sure thing. <laughs> Chekhov, too, of course. But it's Dostoevsky for the most part, said my friend. <laughs> sure. I read the book, too. It's just that I mix him up a lot. Chekhov wrote about that son of Austerlitz, a wounded officer. Powerful imagery. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> How about you, Uncle Sam? Got dreams? You know, I just want to ride my board again, spark a joint up on a beach, and catch that wave. Deep inside, under a grizzled metro dweller. There's still a relaxed Californian inside me. <laughs> ah, get out of here! <laughs> so you know, before Dad talked me into joining the Corps, I used to wear my hair long. He told me they'd make a decent citizen out of the total disappointment that I was. He did still kind of long. College once I was discharged, I joined, and they sent me to the Middle East. Wow! So do you hope your guys would pick you up? I don't see them around. Yeah, I don't hold my breath for my guys. Once this mission's over, I'll submit my discharge papers. I'll reach the ocean, and there, find a ship, maybe? Oh, yeah. Just imagine it. You arrive on that ship, and they go like... Ah, the Russians are coming! <laughs> <laughs> you are one of us now. You don't really need to go anywhere. At least yeah, don't bro. put your Ushanka on. They will sink you on sight. <laughs> I won't. Though I will take my balalaika with me. Balalaika. <laughs> 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 well. Well, I gotta go Who talk. Who has any expectations for our reception at Yamantau? Well, your expectations, Alyosha, are quite obvious, huh? Scantily clad junior officer ladies on the rolling red carpet? Yeah, I'm a simple guy. How about you guys? Well, uh, I hope they will answer a few questions. For example, if there is not a single American within hundreds of miles from Moscow, save for our friend Samuel here, why stay on the ground? I'd put it a bit differently. Did you, dearest High Command gentlemen, know that we in Moscow had to spend 20 years on the ground? Oh, by all means, you can ask those while I'm enjoying my briefing with the junior officer ladies, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
It was strange, man. Mood for a road trip. Oh, we got ourselves a true traveler here. Yeah, we will have to live and see. You are right. Well, I'm gonna move on. Where is Miller? There's Miller boy. Come here, Artyom. Sorry, it takes so long. Hmm? Listen, I had a talk with the Ark. All thanks to Tokarev, he got the decoder working. Uh huh. Ark, come in. Come in, Ark. Over. Hey, this is Ark. Hey, uh, identify yourself. Uh, uh, over. <laughs> this is Colonel Svetoslav Mionnikov speaking. I'm in command of a special operations force. We have received your signal and are currently heading your way. Do you copy? Over. Yes, yes. I hear you loud and clear. Who am I talking to? You forgot uh, over. I you. A deputy chief of communications department, Major Ivanov. A, a moment. Oh, yes, Major. I understand that the checkup is in order. Great, Colonel. Um, Emelikov? Simply capital. I am sorry for the lack of trust, but as you know, the situation is dire and the enemy is always ready to strike. I do understand, Major, and I hope that you can tell the leadership that my people are true to their duty and will be at their full disposal as soon as we arrive. Over. Thank you for the great news. How large is your force, Colonel? Small. I have a squad of the best operatives the special forces have to offer. Oh, you do have that. A squad. Uh, I see. Well, this is great. Great. <laughs> he, I don't think he's actually yes, happy. We are a large force, but we bring a message of extreme importance. We are heading towards you from Sector K6 Alpha. Do you have any data on enemy forces we might encounter on the way? Over. In just a moment, I have to check. K6 uh, Alpha, you say? Uh, as far as I can see, there have been no enemy encounters ever reported in the area, Colonel. I regret. I must end our conversation here, but know that we are waiting for your arrival. I am making my report immediately, and I am sure the Minister of Defense will be eager to see you. I think this guy is, is a honor. bad guy. Thank you. Just a few words more, though. Uh, what is the general situation there, Major? Please. Uh, Colonel, sir, you do understand this is classified information. Uh, but I do understand you. Uh, we are doing fine. Do not worry. Uh, well, see you in the Ark. Over and out. I think he's a I bad guy. The people. Over and out. I seriously so think he's a bad do guy. You get this now, you doubting Thomas. <laughs> I'm so excited, my hands are still shaking. Oh, the minister himself. This is incredible. By the way, Artyom, you should take a look at the map. As you can see, we are heading almost straight for the Yamantau complex. Katya and Chris tell me that the line there is in decent condition. I forgot. We are approaching the Yamantau bunker, the final destination of our long journey. Direct radio contact with the bunker has completely dissolved Miller's resentment towards me for destroying our previous lives. He is eagerly anticipating the meeting with the Minister of Defense he was promised. Probably such things are important for a career officer. The people, though, are less interested. They are asking important questions. Where are the occupying forces? Why is there just wilderness and people gone wild around? What's stopping the government from restoring the country? What was being done in the last 20 years? Miller believes that we'll get all the answers. He will be pardoned as well as Anna and I. And we will all return home to the Metro. Well, I think I'm gonna leave this video here um, because it's 30 minutes in. I know we didn't actually do anything, but we learned a lot in this video and I hope that's fun enough. I might release this one on top of another one the same day. I don't really know, but uh, we'll, we'll see. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.